Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering IBM Edge 2015, brought to you by IBM. Welcome back to, back to Edge, everybody. Edge 2015 is The Cube. John Callisto is here, he's the Vice President of Business Development at Glasshouse Systems. John, welcome to The Cube, good to see you. Thank you, great to be here. So, uh, winning edge, again, third year in a row, is that right? That's right. You guys, uh, Glasshouse continues to get it done. What, what, why, why do you keep winning year after year? Well, after year? you know, third, third consecutive year, that's uh, uh, quite an honor, you know, quite a feat, and uh, this one is very special though. The, uh, the previous two years were in storage, this one's in power, and uh, it, it really validates what we've been really investing in, in technical skills, uh, customer awareness of where, what they're doing with their business, where they want to go, where they want to grow their business, and being able to see that we can compete you know, in a different brand within, within the IBM portfolio at the highest level, and be successful in executing at it, just, uh, number one, demonstrates the capabilities of the company, but also validates where we've invested in. So, that's interesting power. Um, talk about your, your, your relationship with IBM and, and is it specifically it relates to power. Mm -hmm. Like how long you've been selling power and why power? You know, we've been a business partner for over 25 years. We were one of the first business partners in the program, uh, headquartered out of, out of Toronto, uh, doing business both in Canada and the US, you know, throughout the, uh, both countries. And you know, power has been a great platform for us. Uh, and we're seeing a resurgence in it. It's, it's, it's really growing. If you were to look at the trends and directions in the open systems environment five years ago, you know, maybe even sooner, it would only talk about the growth of x86 as a platform and the demise of everything else. Everything else is tapering off. If you look at um, current trends and directions today, it's a different chart. It talks about the growth of Linux and about the decline of Windows as an open systems operating system. It's gone away from really the talking about the hardware and talking about the operating system. And really that's the benefit of power because it allow, power allows you to run Unix, you know, under AIX, IBM I, but also Linux. And it is probably the most powerful Linux platform, especially in comparison to Intel, that you can have out there. So when you talk about the growth of Linux, then the platform of choice becomes power. Well, it's interesting, you're right. The definition of open has really changed in the last 20 years, hasn't it? I mean, Absolutely. You know, <laughs> Intel used to be the open <laughs> platform, and, uh, and now you've got Linux open source, it's running on mainframes, it's running on power. So you mm -hmm. feel, if I'm interpreting correctly, that power differentiates you in the, in the market, allows you to differentiate in the marketplace. Absolutely. So what the Intel x86 base is, there's a lot of noise there, it's kind of commodity. Um, how, how would you describe the, the power base? Y you know, there, there's still a great business out there for x86, don't get me wrong. But when you start looking at customers who are looking at reducing their software costs, when, th when they're charged on a per core basis, you know, more bang for the buck with power. When they're looking at maximizing their VM utilization, you know, and they're comparing x86 to power, you know, more bang for the buck with power. When they're looking at doing high performance computing and looking for performance of Hadoop nodes, you know, more, again, more bang for the buck with power over x86. So when you look at what, what power brings to the table in today's compute intensive environment, you know, it, it, it swings so much to power that uh, that's the discussion. So IBM talks a lot about this CAMS, cloud, analytics, mobile, social, and security. Mm -hmm. uh, they talk a lot about the digital transformation. Talk to us in customer speak. What do customers talk to you about? And then maybe we can translate them into the sort of marketing sure. terms. You know, Glasshouse Systems prides itself on being very customer centric. And it really the, the, the basic key is understand what your customer's business is. You know, and understand what their vision is. You know, what do they want to do now? Where do they want to go? And it's not like that 10 point math problem you had in grade school where you get one point for the answer. You, know, you get nine points for showing your work. 
that's yeah, that's where the rubber meets the road. So we are willing to put in the work with our customers. They they recognize that, they value that. And it's not a matter of going in there and just saying, here's the answer. It's not like, you know, again, you use another you know, analogy, it's not like playing Jeopardy. You know, you start off with the answer and then you try to figure out what the cust you know, what the question is. It's you know, looking at what they where they want to go, what they're trying to do, and then applying the the best practices, the trends and directions they're going in in the industry, that apply to uniquely what they're trying to do, and then customize an IBM solution that's going to address that, not just their needs for today, but also where they want to go in their future, so they're not painted into a technical corner. All right, so let's break them down. So it's cloud. Uh, I think I just heard from you, it's a spectrum. It uh, depends on the customer. Yes. Um, you're going to get some customers that where cloud is a swear word, other customers are like, put it all in the cloud. Yes. Um, so what's the state of cloud in, in your customer base today? I mean, it looks like public cloud's real, it's happening. Public cloud's it's real. growing, we know yeah. that. Uh, but this notion of private cloud is sort of evolving into Absolutely. this hybrid. So talk about that a little bit. You're seeing, you know, public cloud. You know, like I said, the acceptance has been has been there. You know, you're seeing hybrid clouds, but you're seeing really more and more interest going in private clouds because customers they want to they want a secure environment. They want an environment that's their own. They don't necessarily want to share. And if that's the case, then you're going to look at a private cloud, you know, situation. And you know, they're looking for something that's going to be a little bit more bulletproof than public cloud. That's going to be a little bit more resilient and is going to give them the peace of mind that if they've got SOX or HIPAA requirements or any other type of fiduciary requirement that they have, that you know, they're going to get a good night's sleep knowing where their data is and how, how well it's going to be protected. Right. So John, how does power in cloud affect your business? So look at the announcement of power going to SoftLayer. Uh, we've had discussions with the Open Power Group here. Uh, you know, you've got companies like Rackspace and Google uh, talking about how mm -hmm. they're going to leverage power. Does that have an impact on on your power business, just for general awareness in the marketplace, or perhaps you know part of the hybrid cloud strategy? Or you know, curious how that how that impacts. You know, you have to look at it as private cloud security. Okay. Uh, that equals Linux. That that you know, that doesn't equal, you know, Windows number one. So if you want, if you really want something industrial strength, you're going to re really look at Linux as your as your operating system in a cloud env environment. Um, again, and if you want to have a highly scalable, highly flexible, highly affordable platform, you're going to look at Power to, you know, run that Linux operating system over x86, and maybe even seeing some you know, Z Linux in, in that private cloud space for the really, you know, big bruisers. All right, so, so we talk about cloud, let's talk about analytics. Big data, big data is a big, big meme. IBM doesn't actually use that term, they talk about analytics, which mm -hmm. is probably good. Um, what are customers doing there? Uh, people want to be data driven, data is the new oil, it's the new source of competitive advantage, all these sort of, you know, terms. How real is that? Very real. I mean, customers don't throw out data. You know, they are worried about the throwing out an asset. They're worried about, um, you know, whether they realize it's an asset or not. They're worried about uh, throwing out something and then having it come back to haunt them in a lawsuit. For whatever reason, customers don't like to throw out data. That has been a great boon to us, you know, as we look at, you know, customers wanting to do something with that data. It's, you know, they just don't want to sit there. They're looking at it and saying, you know, I've got this asset over there. I know, I, know it's, I know it's worth something. What can I do with it? How can I you know, use that to leverage my business? So you're seeing more and more interest in taking that data, analyzing it, doing different things with it to, to give them more insights into their business and make them more successful. Let's talk a little about mobile. When I talk to, um business technology practitioners, particularly IT practitioners, they tell me they have a love-hate with mobile because they, they're mobile users. Mm -hmm. you know, I love my mobile device, but it's driving um, our infrastructure to the breaking point. Uh, and so we have to respond to that. So that's the, that's the hate part of the love-hate. What are you advising customers? What are you seeing in the customer base regarding mobile adoption? Obviously, you know, huge, but what is it doing to infrastructure? You know, it's putting a lot of thought into where you are today, but it's putting a lot more thought into where you want to be tomorrow. 
You know, so you want to have a system that's going to be scalable, that's going to be flexible, that's going to take you from where you are today where you may think you know a lot about it, okay, to something that you know, could have no limit or you know, a higher limit than you ever thought of before. You know, I thought it was going to be here, but it's way up here. So you want to have a system that's going to, you know, a hardware infrastructure that's going to take you there. You know, when it really comes down to at the end of the day, infrastructure matters. You know, customers recognize that. That's the key to, the, they, they understand that's the key to their success. As a business partner, we get that, you know. And that's why we, 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 we leverage, you know, high, you know, customized solutions. But also, IBM gets it. You know, it's not just a slogan. It really does make a difference because that's what customers are looking for. And it's interesting, I mean, the Apple deal with, with mobile is, mm -hmm. looks like IBM's doing some unique apps as opposed to sort of Me Too apps, which is, which is great. How about social? I mean, it's got this Twitter deal. <laughs> um, social media, again, it's one of those, some guys love it, some guys hate it. There's certainly a lot of data being generated. Yeah. Are there a lot of insights to go with that? There are, and it's, you know, you're going to find things that, you know, as, as you move forward in time, you know, people are going to get things out of social media that they never thought possible before. You know, it's just a matter of, you know, having all that data, uh, and then, you know, utilizing it and, and, and exploiting it to, you know, a company's advantage. All right, so we're getting the, the high sign here. So I, I wonder if you could sort of, you know, put a bow on Edge 2015. You guys, you know, winning Edge again. Um, so congratulations on that. Thank you. And um, as the trucks pull away, what's your, what's the bumper sticker on the back of the truck from your perspective? You know, once again, it's a great conference, you know. 2015, you know, version is you know better than the 2014, and you know that's that's always great when you're moving forward, and you know uh, we're just great you know to be a part of it. Great, you know, happy to be an IBM business partner, and uh, really value not only you know what we you know get from them, but what also what, what the value that they recognize in us and how they you know treat us as, as a business partner. John Callisto. Glasshouse Systems, well-known experts. Congratulations on, on the, the win and, uh, and all the success. Look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you so much. All right. Keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back. This is theCUBE. We're live from Edge 2015. Stu Miniman, Dave Vellante, right back. <laughs>